Greetings and welcome to 603 Knits and, this, and a continuation of our lessons on stranded color work. In this lesson, we're going to address floats and more importantly, carrying floats and locking them in place. A general rule of thumb with, with carrying of floats in the back of color work, these are the floats back here, is that the floats should never carry more than approximately an inch uh, around the back before being locked in. That being said, the row that I'm about to begin carries five stitches, uh, has five stitches knit in a row, and thus a carry in the back, the float in the back, will carry across five stitches. The gauge of this, of this pattern is approximately four and a half stitches to an inch. So I would need to lock minimally at four and a half inches and maybe even a little shorter so as not to have too long of a float in the back in which fingers or whatever can get caught in. So to begin, I'm going to just begin knitting this and I'm knitting in a continental and English style in the two-handed stranded method. The left hand is the recessive color is carried underneath the right hand color which is my dominant color which will which will carry over the recessive color that remains the same throughout my pattern once i've decided what is my dominant and what is my contrast color i'm sorry my dominant and what is my background color or my recessive color dominant recessive left-handed right-handed under over let us begin. This is a knit contrast, and then knit five background. So for the purpose of getting a lock in place without going too far, being as there are five stitches, I'm going to lock that right in the center at the third stitch. So I've done one, I've done, I've done my contrast, I've done two of my background, and now I want to lock, I want to carry but lock this contrast color in place. To do so, I'm going to bring it around the back of this needle, see, around the back, up over the top, and hold it there in place. I'm then going to bring my left hand up over the top to the back. This is where I'm sitting. Now I'm going to take this to the back of this needle. Notice that I'm still holding this in place and it ends up catching on that recessive color stitch. And then I knit the stitch. Let me complete through this, this set and we'll do it again. Because we're going to do that for every one of these five stitches in a row. We're going to lock one on the third so as not to carry too loosely behind. Again, let's make sure that we have happy floats in the back that sag and smile at us so as they're not too tight. If you think they're too tight, they are. Okay, here we go. We have five more in a row. There's one. Here's two. On our third one, we want to lock this contrast so it doesn't have to carry too long. So we carry it to the back, up over the top, and leave it there in place. You can lock it right between the two needles if you wish, so, so that it stays there and you don't have to hold it while you're bringing the other needle over the top and around to the back, and the other yarn over the top and around to the back. Go ahead and flip it back off, holding this in place and go ahead and knit the stitch. Note it, and when you knit the next stitch, everything locks up into place. We'll look at that in the back in a moment. And there it is. It's locked in place and it's ready to go and it's ready to carry over this recessive color for the next stitch. Notice it carries, it carries over it, see? Let's put it in place. Now, 
if we were carrying, we needed to lock the contrast, the uh, recessive color in place, and I'm breaking the pattern now, and just I'm going to carry five, I'm going to do five of these contrast colors. And I want to lock on the third. To lock the contrasting color, I simply need to lift it up, wrap my stitch for my contrast, and knit it. When I go and knit this next contrast color stitch, see it's there? When I go and throw that around the needle, it's going to lock that recessive back down and under it where it belongs for its next stitch under the contrast color. Let's do some more of those just to show that. There's one, here's two. Let's lock a stitch. It's our recessive now that we need to lock in place. We don't go over or around or anything. We just carry that up and we wrap this around. See how it's around and back. And we knit it and now this has been held up and out of the way and it's on top as it's, it's behind that contrast color where it belongs. Now we knit the next one and it locks it right in place and it's ready to go and be carried, continue to be carried under this, this contrast color here. One more time and then we'll do the other one again. Actually, my apologies. That out. Sorry, we wanted to walk there. Go in as if to knit. Hold the main color, the uh, recessive color up. Wrap the contrast around into the back. Bring that back down and just knit the stitch. Finish knitting the stitch. Okay. Let's do one more of the contrast color lock again. Okay. Let's lock in our contrast now because we're continuing with our recessive. This one was a little trickier. We go in as if to knit, bring the contrast color under the right needle, up and over it, let it just hold in place there, bring our recessive color up over into the back, take the contrast off the needle, off that right needle, and knit the stitch. Give it a t just a touch little of tug. And don't worry, that little bump that you see there won't show when you go and knit the next stitch with the contrast. We'll knit it and I'll show you. Remember to stretch your stitches out as you're working along and that will help these colors to fall back into place behind, behind the work. And if a little bump does show, you can go to the back and just give it a little tug to pull it behind the stitch. And that is the essence of locking stitches in the two-handed, two-color-stranded two color work method.